Hey guys, Jen here. And welcome to the third discussion in our story engineering series. Today we are talking about core competency number three, which is theme. And today's discussion will probably be a lot shorter than the ones we've done the last couple of days because the section was pretty short in the book. And um, it's really, you know, it's a really important concept, but it's definitely something that I feel like you can kind of understand it a lot easier than the other pieces of uh, the core competencies, even though it is still a challenge to implement it. But I think out of all the other ones, it's probably the easiest one to understand. So, but um, just starting out, just sort of uh, to get an idea of like, who is already kind of understanding the theme and who's not and who has a lot of questions. So feel free, if you have questions on theme, to put them in the comments. Um, but really, I would just love to know, how do you come up with a theme for your story? So when you're you know, planning out your story, when you're working on your story, how do you come up with a theme for it? So do you um, plan it ahead? Do you wait to see what happens after you write it? How does it work for you? And Larry talked about in story engineering that there are you know, a lot of different ways to come up with your theme. And I'm going to talk you through some of the ones that I find to be the most helpful and, um, you know, the way that he explained it. Because I think that there's something that made it really simple with how he talks about it versus how I've heard about it from other people talking about themes. So, um, but I would love to know how you figure out the theme for your story. So put that in the comments. Um, so how I figure out the ones from my stories and honestly, like I, up until this year, I probably didn't think about theme ahead of time. I really wrote the story, had all the other stuff planned out, wrote the story, and then from there sort of looked at, okay, what, what themes have sort of come through um, because of the character arc, because of the plot. And then from there, I was actually able to sort of figure out, okay, what feels like the right theme for this and then develop more of it based on that decision. Um, but now I'm actually, you know, especially this year as I've sort of um, been diving into this this book and really reading more, I'm giving myself the um, goal of really adding the theme thinking about it ahead of time and really working on it ahead of time as part of my planning process. So um, that's sort of a newer thing that I'm doing, but I think it's going to be really helpful because for my last book, even though the theme was there, it definitely didn't come through to me ahead of time. It was sort of something I figured out as I wrote the book and as I sort of figured out the character arc and all of that. So I think this time to start thinking about the theme ahead of time, you know, it just makes a big difference. So um, I don't know if anyone's here with me. I see a couple of numbers up here. So I think that means there's people. So if anyone's here, comment so that I know that you're here and that you are hanging out with me. Um, so the thing that Larry says about theme, and I think I quoted this the other day, but I just felt like there was something about the way he said it that I thought was so interesting and just really uh, a powerful way of understanding what theme is. So he says that theme is what your story is illuminating about real life. And I thought that was just so perfect because um, I've seen a lot of quotes recently. Hi, Joy. Um, good, there are some people here. <laughs> um, so I, I've seen a lot of quotes lately talking about um, the fact that people who write fiction tell lies to help tell the truth. So it's like you, your theme is telling the truth about life and about your um, viewpoint of it or how you sort of see the perspective on it. But you make up a fictional story in order to tell that life truth that you believe in. So um, it's kind of funny how that works, but that's sort of, you know, the way fiction works is you're making up a story, but to tell something that you see as something that's needed to be told into the world. So um, just a really cool distinction, I think, there. And I think that when I read that sentence, it really helped me to get clear on the fact that um, that theme is really more about the message and it's more about what it is you want to project with your story and what you want the reader to take away. But some of the stuff that Larry talked about, which I thought was really cool, was the idea that theme is how you touch your reader and how you make them feel something. So um, I never heard it said that way before, before I read, you know, story engineering. And I think that is such an interesting way of looking at it because you would think that like what really causes people to feel is your character or the fact that they have this, you know, inner demon that they're dealing with. And um, then you're rooting for them to overcome this external demon. And I feel like a lot of the times we think that that's where the feel comes from. But really reading through this section just made me see how theme is a big part of it. So theme really ties into what is that message that you want people to walk away with? What do you want them to have felt as they read your story and by the time they get to the end of it? So that's really um, an interesting way to look at it. And I thought that was a cool way that he talked about it. Um, but he mentioned that theme really divides into two realms. So, and hang on, I got some comments coming through here. Let's see, Marvin, nice to see you again. Hi, nice to see you. Glad to have you on here again. 
Corey, laugh out loud. I'm still trying to figure out that myself. Being a YA writer, some of the some themes are more popular than others for teens. Besides that, in my series that I'm working on, I'm finding that the backstory is helping provide light on the themes that would naturally happen. Yeah, totally. And I think that to get into something that Larry talked about, and I'm going to go into a second, he talked about the fact that character arc is a great way to represent theme in your story. So I think that's that's really perfect there. Um, Janet, I am a sci-fi writer, so many themes are always around the ethical and moral implications of developing science. I just completed a bio thriller, but I can see myself developing one around microbiology or the periodic table. How much should humans know is a core question I have personally. How much humans should know? I don't, is that a question for me? Or I'm not sure if you're just saying that's a question you bring up in your book, so I'd clarify there. Um, maybe you can hear my dog barking in the background. He'll stop in a second. Um, he's a little upset today because my husband is going on a road trip and hang on, let me go open the door for him. Um, and he's a little upset because he doesn't want to be left alone. It's okay, buddy. You want to come in here? Come in here. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> he's being a big baby. So anyway, okay. So Larry talked about the fact that theme really divides into two realms. And I thought that this distinction was really interesting as well, because I think that a lot of times we think, oh, it has to just be one thing. And so if someone tells us we have to have a theme, it, it needs to be formulaic or it has to fit into a certain box. And I thought it was cool that he sort of gave us a range to say, well, you can you know, go from the end of the spectrum where there's absolutely no theme whatsoever. And then you can go to the other end where there's so much theme that it's literally hitting you over the head with it. And then there's somewhere in between. And I thought that was a really cool way to look at it. Okay. So he says that theme divides into two realms. So Dog, why are you still crying? Come here. I don't know why he's crying. Um, okay, so the first is that theme emerges from character. So the example that he gave was the movie or the book Cider House Rules. And so this one is highly thematic because it's, you know, talking about an issue and especially the time that the book was written to be in. Um, you know, it's very much about abortion and about the issue of choice and having the option to to do, you know, what you want to do and what feels right for you. So that theme was really coming through. But the thing that he talked about in story engineering was that it wasn't just um, that the theme was was that. It was instead of hitting you over the head with it and saying, this is my point of view, he really just explored the issue by showing you different people and different characters and the different things that they were going through. So you sort of get to make up your own opinion. Oh, I'm sorry. This dog is just, he's very sad. He's very upset today. Um, he'll be all right. It's okay. He'll be back. Oh, yeah. Dogs. Anyway, he's very upset because he, he, he thinks that everybody's leaving him. Come here. Come here. Here. You want to say hi? Here. Say hi. This is my dog. He wants to hang out for a few. Anyway. All right. Okay, so that's the first thing that he talked about with theme, emerging from character. Then the second way he talked about it was that character is an ex character experiences that have been crafted purposely to focus on and communicate a specific theme. And then the example that he gave was the Da Vinci Code. So he's saying the Da Vinci Code had a very, very specific theme that it was giving. Um, it was really trying to communicate the idea that, you know, the Catholic Church had this, this hidden secret and, um, you know, that the religion was actually messed up. And so it's sort of just giving Dan Brown's idea of what it's all about and his sort of viewpoint of this. And so those are the two ways to sort of see theme and to really think about it. And then he gave in a scale, like I said, he sort of said, well, you can start in the middle. And really that's where I would say for writers, you probably want to be in the middle somewhere, not so much on one of the extremes, but he mentioned Seinfeld. So Seinfeld, if anyone's a fan of Seinfeld, then you know Seinfeld is a show about nothing. And that's, that's actually the, the running joke that they have is that the show is about nothing. It's just a show where they, you know, show you the characters' lives, but you love the characters so much and they're just so interesting that you keep watching, even though there's really nothing thematic, there's nothing, um, there's even not really a whole lot of plot going on. There's just the day-to-day -day lives of these people, but it just, they happen to be interesting people. So on that side of the spectrum, you've got Seinfeld, no theme whatsoever. It's just sort of, you know, void of theme. And then on the far end, he mentions C.S. Lewis. So, you know, uh, books that have sort of a much stronger theme, a much stronger viewpoint of, well, this is what I believe or what I think, and I want to put this view on you. I want to show this view to you and, and really drive home that this is a belief that, you know, I have that I think you should have or you should think about. So really falling somewhere in the middle of that, he calls exploration. So the idea of, well, you're not really picking a specific theme or you're not, um, you know, really identifying this is a viewpoint I want to hit home for people, but 
somewhere in between there. So you're sort of exploring the idea of, well, you know, I want to share this a little bit and I want to sort of be balanced so that I'm not giving people the viewpoint, but just sort of letting them get some ideas, maybe get some questions in their mind that then would drive home the viewpoint for them. I'm sorry. My dog is just very upset today. Hopefully he'll stop crying and I hopefully you can't hear it too much, but he is just whining back here. Um, so anyway, so uh, another example that I thought was great and I don't, Larry didn't talk about this one, but a movie that stands out for me as far as like theme goes is the movie Rudy. And, um, Before I kind of go into that, Larry talked about something that I think fits perfectly with this, and that's the idea of the best way to handle theme in a story is to put it with your character arc. So you're really blending the two together, and your character arc is becoming the theme. So whatever it is you have your character experiencing, going through, and, you know, just dealing with, and then overcoming in the story, that becomes the theme or the message that you're bringing out in the story. So, for example, with Rudy... I feel like the theme in that one, you know, and there's several themes in it. So I would say there's definitely not one specific by itself. There's a lot of different ones going on. But like with his character arc, he goes from, you know, a person who was sort of had this big dream, but didn't want to go after it. And he had all these fears and all this, you know, just nonsense about people telling him he shouldn't do it and he couldn't do it and all these things. And then by the end of the story, he's become heroic in the fact that he made his dream happen. He did it. He not only uh, got into the school, got on the football team, but he actually got to go out on the field and play for one of the um, the plays that they did. So it really brought that um, character arc out because he went from somebody who wasn't going to chase his dream to somebody who achieved his dream. And so the theme in all of that is really you know, don't give up. It's, you can do anything you set your mind to. Um, it's it, when you believe in yourself, it doesn't matter what anybody else believes and you can do anything. I mean, there's really a lot of themes I think that come from that character arc and from that story. And so I think that's a really great way to describe how theme can work. And I feel like it makes it much more, um, like easy for us to implement because when I was seeing it more as like a message, so, okay, I have to have a message and it has to, you know, people have to walk away with this message in their head. That to me made it feel so much harder than thinking about it as character arc because as character arc, your story is already going to have a character arc. It has to because that's one of the core pieces of building a good story. So by building your um, your theme into the character arc and really thinking about, okay, well, what is this character going to experience over the course of the story? What is he going to learn? What, you know, what lessons is he going to learn? What situations is he going to deal with? And how is he going to change because of that? That really brings out a lot of theme in your story and sometimes without even, you know, meaning to. So the reason I got the theme for my, um, my, no- my novel soundtrack was from the character arc. So I actually wrote this character who was a control freak who you know, felt like she had to be in control of everything. She couldn't give up control. She couldn't ask for help. She had to do everything herself. That was how she always believed you know, that, that's how life had to be because of the backstory that she had and all of that. Well, by the end of the story, she's overcome all of that and realized that she can't do it all herself. She can't control everything and that she has to ask for help because if she doesn't, she's going to screw herself over. Because all the things that were happening in the story were things she couldn't control and they were getting worse and worse every time she tried to control them or every time she tried to take on everything by herself, she completely failed because you can't do it all yourself. And that's sort of the message and the the theme that sort of came through in that story was, you know, you have to believe in yourself, you have to do you. So at the end of the story, she goes from being an employee at this company to actually being an entrepreneur working for herself. And the idea is, you know, that was sort of there all along, but she just hadn't Um, stepped into it because she was afraid so it really brings out the idea of like you can create whatever you want for yourself and you can um, you know do whatever it is you dream of doing and sometimes it doesn't look the way you think it will but it absolutely is possible so I think there were several themes that really came through in that Um, let's see we got some comments Uh, Rosemary says you don't want to push your message that's why I like it to emerge on its own I write mysteries so my overlying theme is justice being served but as the novel develops, the rights of a specific group of victims, the elderly, refugees, etc., will be addressed. Yeah, that's a really good one. And I think um, I also like the idea of not pushing it on people and not hitting them over the head with, oh, God, I'm so sorry about my dog today, um, really pushing the message on people. Like, I um, really, really believe strongly that people shouldn't work nine to five jobs. Like, I really believe that people should find ways to work for themselves to make their own money because that is really the most secure future for you is to, to make your own money, to know how to make your own money. And so that was sort of what I put into my book, but I didn't want to just make it where it was like, everybody has to do this. And I didn't want it to feel like, you know, um, a book that was really hitting people over the head with the idea of don't work a nine to five. Cause I know some people are perfectly happy working nine to five and that's totally fine. 
you know, that's totally fine. That's not what I like and that's not what I would focus on and what I would want to do, but that's other people have their life and it's totally fine. So I didn't want my book to be something that caused people to think, well, you know, this girl just is um, trying to make us do stuff and, you know, whatever. I just didn't want that, that push of like, you have to do it. You have to do this. And, and so I just made it subtle. It was like, it's just showing what it's like to work in a corporate environment, sharing that as her story unfolded, showing the, the stupid things she has to do because she works in a corporate environment and um, things that make no sense a lot of the times. But if you've ever worked in a corporate environment, you understand that sometimes they make you do stuff that makes no sense. Um, and so that was sort of the idea was I'm going to build that theme in. But at the same time, the real theme was her transforming from this person who believed she had to do it that way in order to have what she wanted to finally becoming a person who realized that she can have whatever she wants, whatever her dream is, she can still create it, but it might not be the way she expected it was going to come or the way that it would have happened, you know, in the beginning. So that was the theme that I came up with. Um, I also love the idea, and Larry talked about this, the idea of exploring an issue. So really thinking about something that's maybe a little bit taboo or a little bit more um, just something people don't really write about and then talking about it or exploring it. So um, there, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Obviously, just thinking of topics that are sort of um, out there, like things that maybe people don't really write about a lot or things that when they do, they're sort of controversial. So, I mean, I think that's great. I've been working with people in the last couple of years on some stories that have very strong themes. Like um, I worked with one woman who has a story about suicide and um, the fact that everybody believed this girl committed suicide. And for 10 years, they believed that. And then they end up finding out that it was actually a murder. And, um, and so the whole, I mean, a big part of the theme is the fact that like, you don't always know what's happening in behind the scenes and you don't really know what a person was going through and you might think, you know, but you really don't. And so it sort of brought that out in the story as it goes along. So I just think it's really cool to address topics that are sort of out there or sort of things that people don't really like to talk about because, you know, it steps on people's toes or it causes them to get a little bit upset or push buttons. But those are the stories that really stand out the most. Like think about things like the help. I mean, that had a really, really strong theme. And I think that's why it was so successful because people felt that story. They felt for those people and they understood, like maybe they didn't experience it. They didn't live in that time or they didn't experience that, um, you know, situation in particular, but they actually felt for those characters and they felt for the, the situation they were in, the time that they were in and how, you know, the world was. So um, the theme was very strong in that. And, you know, again, it, that's what it's all about. It's about showing, illuminating something about real life that you see or your perspective of it and then bringing it to life in the fictional way. All right, Don, or I always call you Don. I'm so sorry. Joy Don says, love it. My goal is to never have to work in a cubicle again. Yes, woohoo, that is amazing. That is, that is a great goal, great goal. I quit my day job in 2012 and I had no clue what I was gonna do, but I just knew I couldn't do that anymore and I have not sat in a cubicle ever since, so... It is absolutely possible. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, so yeah, cool. Corey, that's real life. Yes, exactly, exactly. So theme is all about real life. It's all about the things you care about or the things that are interesting to you and how you can bring that to light in fiction. So I've got a bunch of stories I'm working on right now in my head, just sort of developing ideas and stuff. And some of them are a little bit more um, controversial as far as like the topics go. And they are love stories. So I write, you know, I write love stories. But one of the things I'm considering for a story is the idea of... Um, two people having an open relationship. So this is something that's sort of like, I mean, I've never experienced this. I've never done it or anything like that. And I don't really want to, but I've seen a lot of people in my, you know, just virtual world that I'm in, um, that have been talking about this and that I've seen movies and stuff. And so it just sort of became this idea of like, Oh, well, what would it be like to write about characters who had that experience? And so, you know, that's a theme that I'm considering for um, my next story that I'm working on is, you know, how can that sort of work out? And I mean, that's not, the whole thing, but that was just one of the ideas that sort of started the idea um, for this romance that I'm thinking of. So that's the whole idea is you can think about different things in life and especially maybe things that are controversial or that people don't normally talk about or they normally think are not, you know, not good or not right. And you can bring it to light in a way that maybe shows it differently. So maybe, you know, put, painting the picture of these two people who actually want their life to be like that. They actually like the idea of, you know, not being committed, not having freedom. I don't know. Again, this is something that will be just explored in this story. So anyway, so that's just something I'm thinking about. These are some ways to kind of bring to light different pieces of life and real life. Um, I've seen stuff like, for example, um, this was about, oh God, at this point, probably 10 years ago, there was an article um, that I saw in the paper 
that was, well, this is the paper, it was a virtual paper now, but it was actually in the newspaper 10 years ago. Um, and it was about a woman who worked at Starbucks and she actually donated a kidney to a customer who needed a kidney. And this woman had been going there for years, had been a, you know, a loyal customer. And she knew that the woman couldn't find a match. She was having trouble. And so all of a sudden this woman just said, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get tested and see if I'm a match. And it turned out she was. So she donated her kidney, which is crazy. But that was such a cool little slice of life story. And I actually thought, well, that would make a cool, um, a story, you know, just like bringing that to life in a fictional way and showing like the good nature of people and sort of making that the message of the story. So there are a lot of different ways to play with theme, but I loved Larry's thing about blending it with character art because I think that makes it the easiest to implement, the easiest to understand, and just makes it so that you can actually have a strong theme in your story while still tying it to what's happening in the character experience. So that's what I have on theme for you. Like I said, this is going to be a shorter discussion because it's definitely um, something that I mean, you're kind of just talking in circles about the same thing. So I don't want to, you know, do too much on theme. Larry would probably have a whole lot more to add to this than I could because theme is something that I'm sort of just getting into really exploring more as I work on my fiction. So um, I'm sure when he checks back in on the thread, he may have some additional comments to add. So definitely, um, you know, come back and check those out. So if anyone has questions or anything like that, put them in the comments now because I'm going to wrap this up. Um, for tomorrow, we are reading part five. Now, part five is a really, really long section. It's all about story structure. So I'm splitting it up into two parts. So tomorrow, we're going to talk about part five all the way up to um, the foreshadowing. So there's a section on a deeper dive into foreshadowing. We're going to read up to that point, and then we're going to stop, and we're going to talk about that tomorrow, and then we're going to actually get into the specifics of structure for the next day. So Saturday and Sunday, there are still going to be live streams over the weekend. Don't feel like you have to be here live. They'll be recorded so you can check them out whenever you want. Um, I don't normally do that stuff on the weekend, but it just made sense to sort of have, you know, the whole thing all in one thing rather than trying to split it up and go, oh, we're going to skip the weekend and then come back on Monday, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so part five up to foreshadowing, that is what we're going to be covering um, tomorrow. So read that today and then we will get into it. Let's see. Uh, Corey, any opinion as to how deep into character arc theme a young adult novel should go? Well, I'm honestly, young adult novels, I feel like have very strong themes and they definitely come through in the character arc because in the story, you're wanting, you know, this young character to make a big change in their life and to, um, you know, really step up and become different than how they are. Because I think even though that's important in every story, I think in a young adult story, it's really important because young adult stories are very, very thematic and very strong on message and sort of trying to um, you know, just sell a viewpoint in some ways. So, I mean, again, this is just my opinion. Larry would probably have a totally different opinion on this. And I mean, I would definitely check out what people who write that type of fiction would say as well, because that's definitely not type of fiction that I write. So um, I would definitely, you know, check that out. But I would say it never hurts to have a really strong theme. It never hurts to go deep on your character arc and to really force your character. And this is the hard thing, because I feel like... Um, and a lot of times this happens where um, the, oh, hang on a second, just got my notes. Um, a lot of times what happens with stories and with character arc is that people are afraid, writers are afraid to force their character into dire situations, into situations where they're going to have to be tested or they're going to have to be hurt or they're going to have to, you know, have something bad happen to them. Because we create these people and we a lot of times create them from things we've experienced or from people we know or from situations we've been in with other people. So we have this attachment to them and we feel like we don't want to torture them and we don't want to hurt their feelings or we don't want to make them feel bad. But it never, ever, ever hurts to really test your characters, to really put them through um, the gauntlet to see what they've got, you know, and what they're made of. Because that's what a reader wants. A reader wants to see a character, you know, get smashed just smash to pieces and then watch them rebuild themselves. I mean, that's what, what a reader wants to see because that reminds us that we're human and that we have the capacity to fall down, to fail, to mess everything up, and then to get up and keep going. And I think that is a really important thing for any character, and that's what character arc is all about. It's showing an ordinary person's transformation into somebody heroic who's done something worth talking about. And, and so theme really plays heavy into that. 
All right, let's see. Joy, looking forward to story structure. Me too. I love story structure. Other than character arc, it's probably one of my favorite things to talk about because it's one of the things that I'm the best at is figuring out structure for a story and then really analyzing it. So I'm excited to talk about that. And Larry will actually be back with us live tomorrow. So we'll be able to talk to him about structure, which is going to be really great because he obviously is the structure master. Corey, excellent. Thank you. I'm hopefully going in the right direction then. Yes, I'm sure you are. So as long as you have a character arc, you're going to have theme come out no matter what. Because like Larry was saying, if you blend the theme into your character arc and if you sort of use the character arc for creating your theme, it's going to come out naturally. There's really no way around it because it's it's a change and that change is going to cause some sort of a message or some sort of a feel to come through. There's no way around that unless the change isn't big enough for it to even matter. But if you're doing something that's actually causing the character to be forced into changing and forced into doing something different than they've done before, that's going to bring a theme out no matter what. So definitely, um, definitely going in the right direction. Marvin, it seems like great themes cause our minds to stretch. It may be uncomfortable, but ultimately helps us grow as humans. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it makes us feel like we're not alone. We feel understood. We feel like, oh, this author gets it. Like this character has been through what I went through, or uh, I know someone who went through that. And it sort of just reminds you that even though it's fiction, it's still real. Like it's still sometimes more real, it feels like, than real life sometimes. So I think um, that's one of the reasons I love storytelling is because I love the idea of taking things that happened to me or situations I was in or stuff I experienced and turning it into something fictional. So it's made up and it's not about me necessarily, but it's about me projecting my experience into it. So like, for example, Soundcheck was about this character who's a control freak who works at this corporate job who's really, really good at what she does. But because she's not good at playing the corporate game and really living in the rules of being in a corporate environment, she gets knocked before that. And so even though she's very talented and she knows what she's doing, there's just this this thing that says, well, if you don't follow the rules of being in a corporate environment, you know, dressing a certain way, acting a certain way, talking a certain way, you know, being there for the 40 hours a week you're supposed to be there, not leaving early, not coming in late, like all those things. Well, if you can't do that, then, you know, you're not going to make it in a corporate environment. So for me, that's my experience of being in a corporate environment is the whole, um, I don't fit in the rules. I don't know how to not be late or how to not leave early, or I don't know how to, you know, do all these things that they want me to do because that's just not how I naturally function. Like I like freedom. I like to do things on my own time without being forced into a certain time of like, well, I have to be there at nine and I have to stay till five. And I hated that. That was one of the things I hated the most about my job in a corporate environment. And especially because my jobs were all digital. So I was basically driving to work for an hour and a half a day to sit at a desk and work on the internet. I mean, how much sense does that make? Especially today where it's like, we're wasting gas, we're wasting time. It's ridiculous, right? So anyway, so that was really the thing I wanted to put into this story. And and it was really important to me that that come through because that is something that I really believe in. And so I fictionalized the story. Obviously, it's not about me. It's not, I'm not that character, but I definitely created that character and that experience in, um, you know, example of what I had been through and my experience of being in that kind of environment. So for me, that theme sort of was natural. And it definitely, I think a lot of people could relate to it because a lot of people have worked in that type of environment. All right, let's see. Joy, I've looked for a list of themes and haven't come up with much. Do you happen to have a list of themes? I don't have one specifically. Larry may know of a resource. I don't know, so I can um, tag him and maybe he can look at this and see. Um, But otherwise, I mean, really, theme can be anything. It can be anything that you want it to be, any message. So think of it as a message. What do you want to say in this story? What do you want the story to represent about real life, about your viewpoint or your point of view in a situation or on a perspective? Think about it that way because it can be anything. I mean, that's just like inner demons. They could be pretty much anything as long as it's something that society would say is a bad trait or is a bad thing. So don't be a control freak. Don't be angry. Don't be manipulative. Don't lie. Don't whatever. Okay, well, those are all really good um, potential inner demons. And those can also be really rich thematic things if you do them right with the character arc. So definitely just think about um, the stuff you care about. So I would say one way to come up with this, and this wouldn't be from maybe the particular story, but just in general, if you're thinking, okay, I want to have a theme to go into a story development. So then make a list of all the things that you stand for or the stuff that you believe in. What is it that you are willing to get up on a soapbox and preach to people about? Not saying you should do that in your story, 
but this will help you to sort of see the things you care about or the things that represent what you would want to take a stand on. And then from there, you can go, okay, well, how can I use this for a story? And that was sort of what I did unintentionally, but I just, I knew I wanted to write a story about how ridiculous I believe corporate America to be and how stupid I think the work environment is, especially in the digital age when most people are doing work online all day. So um, to me, that was something I absolutely stand for. I'm absolutely um, an advocate of being an entrepreneur, of working for yourself, of making your own way so you don't have to have that type of environment and you can have freedom. So for me, that was something I stand for and that is represented in my story and in the theme. Um, If you're not sure what you stand for, another way to find out is to write what you don't like. So make a list of all the things that you hate or that you despise about life or about the way things are. And then from there, you can sort of backtrack and say, okay, well, if I don't believe in nine to five jobs, then what do you believe in? Well, I believe in freedom. Okay. Or I believe in um, entrepreneurship or I believe in whatever. So it sort of helps you to figure out what you care about. And then from there, you can create themes for your stories. Now, if you're already you know, working on a story that doesn't have a theme yet, then you might want to think about, well, what is this character really doing in this story? And what am I giving them to overcome that could become something thematic that's sort of the message of the story? Um, all right, let's see. Janet, thanks. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, too. Vicki, these sessions have been great. Thank you. You are welcome. Awesome. Great. Okay. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. So again, Larry will be back to check the comments, I'm sure. And he'll be back tomorrow on our live feed. Um, Just as a reminder, again, we are reading part five up to foreshadowing. So once you get to that, you're good. Um, And then we'll talk about the other part on Saturday. And just as a reminder to mark your calendar on Monday, January 9th, me and Larry are doing a live call at 7 p.m. Eastern. I will put out the actual call information and everything on Monday. Um, So just know, you know, it'll be in the live stream and all that, but just to Um, remind you, put in your calendar from now so that you block out the time because you're definitely going to want to get on this call because he's going to be sharing some really great stuff. You're going to be able to ask him questions and um, and he's also going to share with you the new project that he's working on and I'm going to tell you about the new um, training that I've just created that's totally free that you get to have on Monday. So I will catch you guys next time. You are welcome and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.